What's going on, you guys? AJ Tucker here with AJ Self Defense. Today, I want to talk about the Vicky and Casey White case. All right, this is where a prison guard she had about a day. She had one more day until it was time for her to retire. She put in all that work and she risked it all for this six, nine, three hundred and pound, three hundred pound murder murderer. All right, she busted him out of jail a few days before that. They did a dry run, basically where she took them out for 40 minutes and then brought them back in to see their response. And then they went ahead with the regular escape. So everybody knows about this story. If you don't know about it, you have plenty of outlets to tell you all about this story. Um, she ended up, they ended up getting caught and she ended up killing herself. She shot herself and that's pretty much was it. So for me, I, I did want to come on and talk about this, but I wanted to talk more on how and why this happened. Why is it why is there this fascination? Why do women have this fascination with convicts or people that are behind bars? And you know, I, so I did some digging, I did some searching because we this is a, a a known thing. You know, like sometimes girls like they like bad boys and they don't and nice guys finish last and all that stuff. And I'm going to, you know, I compiled some information and I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to go over it and I think this is relevant to uh, the self-defense channel because sometimes it's better to stay out of situations, to stay away from these types. And there are some women that are attracted to these types. Not most women, but some women, okay? So, why are women attracted to men behind bars? You know, going all the way back to Ted Bundy, but, uh, I was going to say Bundy, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, um, all those, you know, just killers. These guys had tons and tons of male, fan male, women just throwing themselves at them because they were behind bars, all right? They were just attracted to them. And so one of the things these guys are sometimes seen as celebrities, they have that celebrity effect to them. You know, they're not somebody, they're not Brad Pitt. You're not going to get close to Brad Pitt, right? But if you see a guy like Ted Bunny or somebody behind bars, you write him a letter, He's probably going to write you back. So you get that attention from someone that's kind of like a celebrity. The next thing, he's a bad boy. Okay, that, you know, that's something. Another thing is that they feel they can fix them. You know, some women are fixers. They want to fix a man. They take this guy and you, you've had friends or you may be a woman who've been in that situation where you tried to fix a man and there's no fixing him. Imagine a murderer. Murder is the worst thing you can possibly do. Imagine fixing a murderer. That's like the ultimate fixer-upper. You know, my wife, she likes watching those fixer-upper shows on uh, on TV, man, where they, they take a, a jacked-up-looking house, they come in, they remodel it, and it's, and it's like, and then they show it to them again, and the people cry because their home has been transformed. Like, some women love that, doing that to men or thinking they can do that to men. So that's like the ultimate fixer-upper project. The next thing is it is safe. And you're like, wait a minute, this guy's a murderer. How is it safe falling in love with the murderer? Well, if this guy's behind bars, then it's safe to have that fascination with him. Now, when the, the Casey White case or the Vicky White case, that wasn't the case because she busted him out of jail. All right. So that, that goes outside. But I just want to talk about in general. Uh, another thing is you don't have, the women don't have to invest themselves in this guy. They don't have to do his laundry. They don't have to cook for him. They don't have to do all this stuff. All they have to do is if they have conjugal visits, they can do that. But all they have to do is write a letter and then they get that uh, attention back. So it's, it's very safe and it's very low investment. The next thing is a murderer can be interpreted, interpreted as someone who is strong. Now this goes back to just a base instinct. All right. Just like an ancient just feeling of, hey, this person, he's able to murder somebody, so this person is strong. Now, I'm not saying all women think like this. I'm just talking about just a small percentage and trying to like look into why this happen, happens. Now, I'm no psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever. This is just from my own little research, so please don't take this as, you know, golden or whatever. But if you if you really look into this stuff, you're like, mm, I can I can see I see what he's trying to do there. Um, another reason is uh, some women are unable to find love in normal ways. Uh, they may have you know personality issue. They may be very introverted. They uh, may not be as may not feel as attractive. I'm not going to say they not be may not be as attractive. They may not feel as attractive, and so they're not able to form relationships in a, in a typical way. 
Another one is they seek relationships that cannot be traditionally consummated. Um, another reason is they're the perfect boyfriend. So it's like, wait a minute, how can a murderer behind bars be the perfect boyfriend? Well, number one, she knows where he is at all times. Number two, there's no accountability. So once you leave that jail, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, number four or number three, constantly charges up that fantasy. So if a woman, if she fantasizes about a bad boy and she acts on it and then all the bad stuff that comes along with that happens, then it's over. But imagine having a fantasy about somebody behind bars. You can tell every time a news article comes out, every time an interview comes out, it recharges that fantasy. Um, and it's easier. And so they did ask a question where are women are generally attracted to men with psychopathic traits? And the answer is no. Overall, the answer is no. Most women want stability. But for the women who are attracted to this, um, they did ask the question, well, hey, well, these women must be damaged. And in some cases, that's true. In some cases, that's, that's not true. So like different um, you know, research, research groups, they come up with uh, mixed signals, but I just wanted to dive into it and see. So let me go back. I'm sorry. I almost ended the video prematurely. Um, so they get mixed results and there's just diff there's different type types of psychopaths. So there's the, the manipulator. So women who are very loyal and very trusting, they're, they're more attracted to these guys who are very um, uh, manipulative. Some women uh, who have psychopathic tendencies themselves are attracted to the more aggressive psych psychopaths, all right? So that's pretty much all I got for that one. I just wanted to dive into it um, because when it comes to self-defense, I always say it's not all about just fighting someone off. It's about avoiding these situations or learning more on why these situations happen. How do we get caught up? How do I find myself caught up? A lot of people are making jokes um, you know, about this woman, like, oh man, he must have been laying it down. He must have been good at this and that. And and it goes a little deep. It goes way deeper than that. You just don't. Nobody's that good. And a, and a, a lot of women that's been talking about this, they look at the guy and they say, hey, he was not attractive whatsoever. I'm I'm not making no judgments. I'm just talking about. I'm just passing along information. So tell me what you think about that. I will see you on the next one.